Okay, guys, we are looking at two geometric sequences, and we are going to figure out the explicit formula for each of them. Now, first, I want you to make sure you're in the right place. As you're working with sequences, you're going to hear some different formulas. Arithmetic recursive, arithmetic explicit, geometric recursive, and geometric explicit. <laughs> Now, in this video, we are focusing on this, Geometric Explicit. If you need any of the other ones, I will link a playlist for you in the corner. These are sequences, right? What is the purpose of the explicit formula, you ask? Well, good question. It is to find more numbers in each of these sequences. This dot, dot, dot here means, guess what? This sequence keeps going. It doesn't stop after four numbers. The purpose of the explicit formula is to find more numbers in this sequence easily. So why is it called explicit? I don't know. I know it's a little weird. All right, the first thing I'm going to do to find this formula is I wanna figure out the pattern. These aren't just randomly listed numbers. There's some sort of pattern between them. So when I look at it, I notice that I am multiplying by five each time to get the next number. So great, now I know that. Now, before we figure out the explicit formula, I wanna go over a little bit of terminology and then it falls together pretty quickly. So when you're working with these, you're going to see a lot of A's and a lot of N's. The N refers to the place it is in line, basically, the place in the sequence. So N equals 1 is the first number in the sequence. N equals 3 is the third number in the sequence, and on it goes, right? When you see A with a little number like this, a little subscript, A sub 1, that's talking about the value of that number, okay? So... A sub 1 in this case is negative 4. You're also going to see A sub n quite frequently. What that is saying is plug in whatever number you want for n to find that in the sequence. So if I had A sub 100, I'm looking for the 100th term. Okay, as we write our formulas, we're going to leave a lot of things as A sub n so people can plug in what they want. Okay, so now that we know that, I want to pretend for a second that we are trying to find the fifth term in this sequence, or we could call it a sub 5. Well, what would I do? I would multiply by 5 again and get 2,500, which is great. But what if I wanted to find not the fifth term? but I wanted to find the 10th term or the 100th term or the 500th term. Well, the explicit formula is going to allow us to find each of those terms just by plugging in what number we want. All right. Now, if that sounds crazy, guess what? I'm going to show you. So this is the explicit formula we are going to fill in. All right. Now, the n's are going to stay n's. We are going to fill in numbers for the a sub 1 and the r. All right. If you're not following me, stick with me. It's going to make sense. Now, I don't want you just to memorize this. I mean, if you really have to, you can. But I'm going to talk about it as we fill it in so that hopefully you understand it and you're not just memorizing things. So let's go ahead and look at this. This is telling me a sub n, which is another way of saying whatever number you want to find. You plug in whatever number for n to figure out, oh, I want to know the 50th, so I plug in 50 for n. So a sub n is another way of saying whatever number you want to find. That is equal to a sub 1, the first number in my sequence. So in this one, it is 4. Okay, from here, we are multiplying by R. R stands for common ratio, which basically just means what are we doing to it each time? Well, we're multiplying by 5, okay? So times 5, but not just once, right? That would give me the second number, but what about all these other numbers we want to be able to find? Well, this is where to the power of N minus 1 comes in. All right. I want you to think about this for a minute. When we found the fifth term, how many times had we multiplied by five from the beginning? We multiplied one, two, three, four times to get the fifth term. One less time 
than the number we wanted. That is where this n minus one comes in, okay? So we are going to have four times five to the n minus one power, all right? Isn't that cool? That is my answer right there, you guys. And I hope it makes sense why that's my answer. If you wanted to find the hundredth term in this sequence, you would multiply by five 99 times, right? So that is why the n minus one. If I plugged in that hundred, I would get four times five to the hundred minus one, so 99th power, meaning times four by five, 99 times, and you'll get the hundredth term, right? So cool. Let's do it again. So over here, what are we doing each time? We are dividing by three. Sorry, that's a lie. That's a total lie. We're dividing by negative three. <laughs> We're dividing by negative three each time. Now, a lot of times when we do, when we work with sequences and these formulas, Instead of thinking of divide, a lot of times we like to think of multiplying by a fraction, which is really the same thing. So I could also think of this as that we are multiplying by a negative one third, right? That's just another way of saying it. So we could also be multiplying by negative one third each time. All right, so how do I apply that to my explicit formula? Well, I say whatever number you want to find, take the first number in your sequence. In this time, it is 81. And then what are we doing? We are multiplying by a negative one third. But how many times? If I multiply by it once, I get the next term. But if I want the 50th term, I need to multiply by it 49 times. So the way to say that in math language is to the power of n minus 1. And that is what that formula looks like. Now, if you want to check yourself, I love to check myself, especially because, hey, I make math videos and I want to make sure that I am giving you guys correct information. So oftentimes I will check myself to make sure. So if I were to figure out the fifth term manually, you could say, I would divide by negative three again, or you could say multiply by negative one third, and I would end up with one here, right? So a sub five in this example is one. So let's go ahead and plug it into our explicit formula and make sure when we plug in five for n, that we end up with one, all right? So if I have a sub five, I'm looking for the fifth number in the sequence where n equals five. I believe that is equal to 81 times negative one third to the n minus one power. So n minus one, in this case, we're plugging in five for one. So five minus one would be four. All right, because didn't we multiply it by it four times? One, two, three. I didn't write it the fourth time, but we did. <laughs> okay, we multiplied by it four times. So if I do negative one third to the fourth power, guess what I get? I get a positive one over 81. Or if you wanted to do it on your calculator and get the decimal, that's totally fine. You'll end up with the same answer. So I end up with a sub five equals 81 times one over 81. And you probably remember what happens. These guys cancel and I end up with just, oh, <clears throat> nudging my paper. I end up with just one. So I end up with a sub five equals one. Hallelujah. So I'm feeling pretty confident that I could plug in whatever number I want for n and figure out that number in the sequence. All right, I hope this made sense. If you need some more videos, I will link that playlist for you. Thanks.